Martha's here to tell you her story. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, of course, Peg Leg Smith was, you know, a prospector. He was trying to find hidden treasure and all these things. But we also know that he was kind of a surly character. So, of course, there was a lot of drinking involved. There was a lot of gambling involved. And a lot of women and a lot of lying for certain. So he's pretty much the guy that you try to steer your best friends away from. You say, no, this guy's no good. And they end up going with him anyways because, of course, he's charming. They fall for him and, you know, they break his hearts. And it's terrible. That's the guy. But I want to tell you the story of the night that Peg Leg Smith turned a new leaf. So at this point in his life, Peg Leg Smith had the customary two legs, so he was referred to as just Smith, plain old Smith. So Smith, at this point, he's working in the mines all day, and it's a lot of hard work. He's tired, so he decides, you know, I'm going to make this night special. I mean, I'm going to go to the saloon, and I'm going to get really drunk, like he does every night. So he does that. He's a couple drinks in, and across the bar, he sees the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in his entire life. She's tall, she's blonde, she's I'm not buxom. that tall and I'm not blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and she has all her teeth. She's the whole package, the whole package. So, you know, Peg Leg Smith, or Smith at this point, is not really a beginner when it comes to people of the feminine nature, but his heart is just beating out of his chest when he walks up to her. So he sidles next up to her at the bar, and he gives her his famous line that he invented. You come here often? <laughs> you can thank him for that. And she responds, coolly, just oozing seduction, and she says, I'm not saying a word until you buy me a drink. Bartender, two whiskeys on the rocks, please. And Smith looks in amazement as this lady downs the whole glass of whiskey in one go like a pro. And she says, the name's Darla. I'd like another drink now. Wow, what a woman. So the rest of the night goes through the same pattern. Shot after shot, drink after drink, and Smith can't even keep up with her. And then it comes to the gambling. Usually he would have, you know, a woman on his arm for a good luck charm, but this woman was raking in all kinds of money that he'd never even seen before. Now, you can really say that she was out smithing Smith. So at this point, Smith starts to think to himself, you know, I never thought that I would be the kind of man that would want to settle down, but this lady, she makes me want to put on the apron and clean the house myself if that's what it takes to keep her around. And so in a fit of passion, he gets down on one knee and says, Darla, I love you. I want you in my life forever and ever and ever. I'll be completely reformed. I won't, I won't drink any liquor. I won't play any more card games. I won't even look at another woman as long as I can have you as my wife. You know, help. I'd give my right leg to be with you. And she simply looks down at him and says, prove it, saunters away. And Smith decides to do just that. So he stumbles out of the saloon, and he finds a beggar on the street, grabs him by the arm, tells him exactly what he wants him to do, takes him outside the shed by the saloon, and comes out with two things that he hands him. All the money in his pocket, and an axe. So Smith lays on the ground, trying to prepare himself for what's about to happen. And the beggar raises the axe up in the air. And as it goes down, Smith yells out, Darla, I love you! <laughs> and the beggar chops off the poor, love-stricken Smith's leg. And the pain is unimaginable. But it's no pain like it would be if he had to live his life without Darla. So he picks up his leg, hops back over to the saloon, raises the leg in the air and says, Darla, I did it for you! I did what you said! But Darla's nowhere to be found. Darla 
rode off into the night in search of more men to drive mad. Legend says that she even went all the way to France to become very friends with a certain French famous painter that we know. She liked to call him Vinny. <laughs> that went. And as it was for him, things went to about the same. The drinking, the gambling, the women, the lying. The only difference is that now he had a peg leg to show for it. A constant reminder of the woman that broke his heart and took his life. Oh, Thank you. God. Amen. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our furthest north. <laughs>